check in on the Lakers head coaching search, which is now entering its seventh week and has yielded two candidates. Uh, the good news is that now the Lakers are interviewing J.J. Redick, who used to play basketball and also does a podcast Recently. with LeBron James. This after they were publicly scorned mm -hmm. by Danny Hurley. Brew, we'll start with you. Do you think this would be a good hire? At this point, just hire somebody. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a warm body is a good hire. At this point, what, what is taking so long? Well, I don't know. Listen, you, you can't hire him right now or else we don't get heard about ethical scoring in the NBA Finals broadcast. <laughs> this is, this is, look, <laughs> the, they should hire, he's not even a candidate, Mark Jackson. After him, go get Sam Cassell. I was going to say, what about Sam Cassell? Yeah, they're not going to get Sam but I, well, they, of they, the guys that are been, have well, been named, I would go get Cassell. Hold, can I ask you a question real quick on that and then you finish? It was like, oh, they can't get Cassell because he's got Oh, gotta, they can. Right. you got to wait for the finals to be over for Sam Cassell because he's coaching it. Evidently, you got to wait for the finals to be over for J.J. anyway. So, I don't know why Cassell wouldn't be involved. No, and, they, they should. Of the guys that are being named, it should be Cassell. He was a leader as a player. He, he was respected as a player. He's respected now. He's a great communicator. He paid his dues. Yeah, he's 15 years as an assistant <laughs> with some top coaches. Yes. Yep. All right? So, he should be the one. But now, I mean, look, J.J. is just a complete unknown. He might be great. He might be horrible. You know, we don't know how he's going to respond in the heat of the moment in terms of making substitutions and things like that, adjustments, things like that. We know he knows the game, okay? We don't know how is he going to really coach LeBron hard and be able. Will LeBron let him Coach him hard. Because if the, and how will the players react? Will the players think this is just LeBron's guy or LeBron's really is coaching the team? Mm -hmm. Does LeBron want a coach? Like, remember, this is mean, similar. Like, like Steve Nash. Steve Nash, I think, is a decent comp. He I don't know if he has the strong personality as a stronger personality as Reddick, but he had the co-sign of his stars, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. All right, and it and you would have think. I mean, Nash was obviously a very smart player, so he knew the game, knew the X's and O's, and it obviously didn't work. I say, does LeBron want a coach? Because remember, Kyrie was like, you know, we 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 really don't need oh, a coach. I, we can just get out there and do our thing. Yeah, and I, I and LeBron obviously is very smart about the game. So is he going to let JJ Reddick coach him? That's a real question because they apparently are friends. And so that can be a challenge. So, mm. look, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. You can't tell me it's a great hire or a horrible hire at this point because it's a complete unknown. So I, I think I do know that LeBron wants a coach because Danny Hurley told Colin two hours ago that LeBron texted him during this process, that once it came out that Danny Hurley was a candidate, that he was texting with LeBron and talking with LeBron, and, see, and Hurley talked about how excited he would have been to coach LeBron, which is almost, and Hurley also then said in an earlier interview on Levitard's show, essentially, yeah, it was about money. Like, there would have been a right. dollar amount to get me to coach the Lakers. Yep. That's also a low key, just before you go, yeah. like LeBron's back to the Lakers. Well, right or no? I didn't so listen to I don't. So well, here's I mean, the thing. I think not. so. Dan Dan was careful in what he said to Colin. He said if you know that LeBron told me if he was there. Okay. But I I do think it is more than a low key of had they signed Danny Hurley, LeBron back to the Lakers. Now I don't know. Mm -hmm. Now now because the other thing is this: James Borrego's on that list. James Borrego might get hired by the Cavs here shortly. Like they are they are going to end up potentially whether they want to admit this or not, with their second or third or fourth choice, even though they are the Los Angeles Lakers. And I just, I, I have a really hard time being convinced that the Lakers think this would be a good hire hmm. because they publicly went after someone else. I mean, that's... That, 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 that is, to me... Are you it, suggesting they don't think there's a good hire? Because if they the, don't think it's a good hire, don't hire him. Well, yeah, but I... It's not like people are claiming, oh, <laughs> Reddick's the next guy. No, Reddick, but, but, like, but we, are, we already have very influential members of the media pinning this potential hire on LeBron James. And so I think one of the biggest pros that J.J. has in his column from the Lakers' perspective is 
if it doesn't work, usually GMs don't get to fire four coaches, but it's not my fault. LeBron had us do it. Mm. And so I just – I, That's just he, a horrible way to do business. I, well, there's a lot of things. That it's it's a, horrible a horrible way, way to, to publicly re recruit a guy and then lowball him in a way that all of us knew was lowballing him. And then where that guy is comfortable going on the radio and TV a couple days later and being like, yeah, they didn't offer enough money, which I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to be unfair to Dan, but he said very clearly, of course, there's a dollar amount that would make me pick up and move my family. Of he course, there was a financial him that part dollar of amount. Well, I don't understand. Like, I don't think I, he wanted to go there. I, and he even said that he had a deal with UConn already. He said he, said he was getting that, his why ways going, with UConn right, already. And the numbers agreed to. Yeah. So why are you going to L.A.? Because he thought they might offer him $100 million. But we agreed to this number with UConn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I think you can – there's buyouts. I think you can go. But the, here's the other part of it, and this is where I want your mm -hmm. take, Wilds. If, if we were adding a fourth person to the show – and it's like, hey, our number one pick, I won't say any names, but is a retired Hall of Fame basketball player. And then we don't get him. And it's like, okay, instead we are going to hire a guy that used to run an analytics department in the NFL. Be like, well, that's weird. Were you just trying to add someone or did you have a vision in mind? So, that's, so that's if your point. number one choice is seasoned, grizzled, hard-ass college coach with this long yeah. development resume. Why is your number two choice the young guy who's never coached anything? Hey, the, coaches his kids' team. Oh, no, I'm not trying – again, I'm not trying to be rude, but you, but the their resumes are not similar. Do you understand yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but there's not think, a decision tree there okay. that makes sense I'll, to I'll me. I'll expound on that because someone – this is not an original thought. I saw it, someone tweeted at me. I was All like, of oh. mine are, by the way. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> that – the Danny Hurley hire would be more like the Brad Stevens hire. And when yes, you come right, in, it's like, right. hey, I'm here to Build develop the, the young guys, develop a culture, but it's also time to close the door on the old veterans that got us this championship, restart, send everybody to Brooklyn, get draft picks, and build, build, start building with Tatum and Brown, and now it's finally But they were going to try to do both. Yeah. But that does – I don't know if that works. Like, if you're going to no, bring in Daly, I think if you brought in Danny Hurley, it's, it's a bit of a rebuild and then try to go. But you're bringing in J.J., you have to be an S-Bob team. That's not – No, it's got like, – S-Bob expectations and first-round Bob talent. Like I said, if they go out in the first or second round in the next two years, which is likely – J.J. Reddick could get fired. But they're going to be back on the carousel. Yeah, right. But it's just – I just want did. a continuity of decision. Like, if the story after missing out on Danny Hurley was Jay Wright on his way to L.A. Yeah, for an thing. interview. Well, his name that, was out I, there. I know, yeah. very, but it was, but the late, you know, he hasn't been interviewed. They should have looked at Jay Wright. Well, and if, if it was the leading candidates are James Borrego, Mark Jackson, yeah. Sam Cassell. I'm like, oh, okay, that, and I know Sam hasn't been a head coach, but a lot of experience, whatever it is. This doesn't track. I know, These are two diametrically opposed. The, the only similarity between J.J. Redick and Dan Hurley is they have both been on J.J. Redick's podcast. Okay, I just don't want to have you shoot yourself in the foot. If we're going down the podcast lane of people who really love basketball analytics and love LeBron James, you're well, in the Well, that's kind of what I'm saying. Are, that if you don't land J.J., I'm obviously in at least getting, the same category. You're getting so I also close. have coached junior high basketball, <laughs> by the way, to a district championship thing. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.